Hi, good morning. Glory to God in the highest. Come, Lord Jesus Christ. God put in my heart for me to talk to you about biblical days for each month and read out the Bible verses stating what happened on that day or in that particular month in the Bible. This is the 12th and final one in the monthly podcast series looking into the month of December in the Bible. 1st of December 2021 is 27th Kislev year 5782. And 31st of December, year 2021, is 27th Tevet, year 5782. Kislev is the ninth month in Hebrew calendar, and Tevet is the tenth month in the Hebrew calendar. Before we start, I would like to give you an introduction to Hebrew calendar. According to Hebrew calendar, we are now in the sixth millennium. Bible says, but beloved, Do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. 2 Peter 3, verse 8. And in Genesis 2, verses 2 and 3 states, And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Jewish years are counted from the creation of the world. It is generally accepted that the sage Rabbi Yosef ben Halafta is the one who made the initial calculations. According to Rabbi Yosef's understanding from the book of Genesis, the process of creation began on Elul 25th. And the sixth day when Adam and Eve were created was the first day of Tishri, which is when the Jewish New Year Rosh Hashanah is celebrated. Lord says in Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 31, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food, also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life. I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen to that. And as we stated, that very sixth day is celebrated as the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah. The Hebrew year count starts in year 3761 BCE which the 12th century Jewish philosopher Maimonides established as the biblical date of creation. The new year begins, as we stated, with Rosh Hashanah on the 1st of Tishri, which is the seventh month, either in September or early October, according to Gregorian calendar. The year 5782 started at sunset on 6th of September year 2021, and it will end at sunset on 8th of September, year 2021. At this point, I would like to emphasize the Jewish day begins at sunset. In Jewish calendar, regular common years have 12 months with a total of 354 days, and leap years have 13 months and they are 384 days long. A leap year in the Jewish calendar occurs seven times in a 19-year cycle, in Hebrew, a leap year is referred as Shana Mubaret, which means pregnant year. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that always makes me smile. Months in the Jewish calendar are based on the phases of the moon. 
A new month begins on the day of the crescent moon after the new moon phase. Because the sum of 12 lunar months, i.e. 12 full cycles of the moon, is roughly 354 days, which is about 11 days shorter than the solar year, and solar year is the time Earth takes to orbit the sun, as you know, last 365 days, a 13th month is periodically added to keep the calendar in step with the astronomical seasons. After this introduction, I would like to read the first Bible verse for the ninth month, which is found in 1 Chronicles chapter 27, verse 12. The ninth captain for the ninth month was Abizer, the Anotatite of the Benjamites in his division were 24,000. Abizer means father of help. And Anatot is a town which lay between Michmash and Jerusalem in the territory of Benjamin, assigned to the Levites. It was the native place of Abiata and of the prophet Jeremiah. He laid the field which Jeremiah purchased with the commandment of God in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 7. Today, this town is identified as Anata, two and a quarter miles northeast of Jerusalem, a small village of some 15 houses with remains of ancient walls. One of famous judges of Israel, Gideon, come from the family of Abiezer. At this point, I would like to state that there were 12 judges, and I would like to state their names. The first, Odniel, who was from Judah and judged Israel for 40 years. Then comes Ehud, a Benjaminite, and judged Israel for 80 years. Then comes Shamga from Judah. Then comes Deborah and Barak, judge Israel for 40 years. Deborah was from Ephraim, Barak was a Naphtali. Then comes Gideon from tribe of Manasseh, judge Israel for 40 years. Then comes Tola and Issachar, judge Israel for 23 years. Then comes Jaye, a Gileadite, judge Israel for 22 years. Then comes Jephtha, a Gileadite too, and judge Israel for 6 years. Then comes Ubzan, from Judah, Bethlehem, judge Israel for 7 years. Then comes Elon, a Zebulonite, judge Israel for 10 years. Then comes Abdon, Ephraimite. Judge Israel for eight years. Then comes Samson from Dan. Judge Israel for 20 years. The judges' period in the Bible starts after the death of Joshua and continued until Saul was crowned king of Israel by the prophet Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 24. The period of judges believed to be around 300 years. The judges in the Bible did not oversee merely legal matters. Their task often included military and administrative authority and fight against their enemies. The period of judges came about because Israel did not drive out the inhabitants of the land as Lord commanded them. The commandment of God regarding the conquest of Canaan is found in Numbers chapter 33 from verse 50. It states, Now the Lord spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from the Jericho, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you have crossed the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Destroy all their engraved stones, destroy all their molded images, and demolish all their high places. You shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land, and dwell in it, for I have given you the land to possess. And you shall divide the land by lot as an inheritance among your families. To the larger you shall give a larger inheritance, and to the smaller you shall give a smaller inheritance. There everyone's inheritance shall be whatever falls to him by lot. You shall inherit according to the tribes of your fathers. But 
If you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall be that those whom let remain shall be irritants in your eyes and thorns in your sides, and they shall harass you in the land where you dwell. Moreover, it shall be that I will do to you as I thought to do to them. We read in Judges chapter 1 verse 27 that the conquest of the land is incomplete. Titled Incomplete Conquest of the Land, it says in verse 27, However, Manasseh did not drive out the inhabitants of Bethshean and its villages, or Tanakh and its villages, or the inhabitants of Do and its villages, or the inhabitants of Iblium and its villages, or the inhabitants of Megiddo and its villages. For the Canaanites were determined to dwell in that land. And it continues in verse 28. And it came to pass when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites under tribute, but they did not completely drive them out. Hence it caused problems for Israel and God gave them judges. Chapter 2 states Israel's disobedience from verse 1. Then the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I led you up from Egypt and brought you to the land of which I swore to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you, and you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall tear down their altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Therefore I also said, I will not drive them out before you. But they shall be thorns in your side, and their gods shall be a snare to you. So it was when the angel of the Lord spoke these words to all the children of Israel that the people lifted up their voices and wept. Then they called the name of that place Bochim, and they sacrificed there to the Lord. Bochim means weeping. Their failure to totally eliminate all of the pagans in the promised land eventually led to the nation's downfall. Hence their disobedience to Lord commandment led them to their downfall and they became a snare and oppressed by their enemies. And disobedience eventually led them to their own captivity. As you know, they were taken captives by Babylonians for 70 years. God gave them judges to deliver them from the hands of their enemies. Bible says, when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for the children of Israel, who delivered them from the hands of their enemies. Chapter 2 from verse 11 is titled, Israel's Unfaithfulness. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served the Baals, and they forsook the Lord, God of their fathers, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt, and they followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them. And they bowed down to them, and they provoked the Lord to anger. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtoreths. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. So he delivered them into the hands of plunderers who despoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies all around, so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Wherever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them. For calamity, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn to them, and they have greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges who delivered them out of the hand of those who plundered them. And Lord stated in verse 20, Because this nation has transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and has not heeded my voice. I also will no longer drive out before them any of the nations which Joshua left when he died, so that through them I may test Israel, whether they will keep the ways of the Lord to walk in them as their fathers kept them or not. Therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out immediately, nor did he deliver them into the hand of Joshua. Bible says in chapter 6, Midianites oppress Israel, and we see Gideon being commissioned by the Lord, stating in verse 14, You shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen to that! 
Bible says in verse 12, The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said to him, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. And in verse 14, the Lord states, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? And the Lord states in verse 16, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! What a commissioning! Amen! Lord first empowers Gideon by stating, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And then he states, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of Midianites. Have I not sent you? And the third time he states, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Amen to that. Amen to that. Next we see Gideon destroys the altar of Baal. And verse 34 states, Then he blew the trumpet, and the Abiezrites gathered behind him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen to that. And we read in chapter 7, God delivered them from the oppression of the Midianites with just 300 men. Verse 16 states, Then he divided the 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet into every man's hand with empty pitchers and torches inside the pitchers. Then he said to them, Look at me and do likewise. Watch, and when I come to the edge of the camp, you shall do as I do. When I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, then you also blow the trumpets on every side of the camp and say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen to that. And Bible says, The whole army of Midians run and cried out and fled. Amen. Amen. In verse 22, it states, When the three hundred blew the trumpets, the Lord set every man's sword against his companion throughout the whole camp, and the army fled. Verse 23 continues, And the men of Israel gathered together from Naphtali, Asher, and all Manasseh, and pursued Midianites. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen to that. And Bible says the country was quiet for 40 years in the days of Gideon. Next Bible verse for the month of December is found in Genesis chapter 8 verse 5. This is regarding the great flood. If you remember in chapter 6 verse 5 it states, When the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, and the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. And Bible says, God flooded the earth, and God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of copper wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. Stated in verse 18, But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. Lord said in chapter 7 verse 1, Because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen to that. And Bible says in verse 11, In the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were open, and rain was on the earth forty days and forty nights. Verse 24 states, And the waters prevailed on the earth, 150 days chapter 8 from verse 4 then the ark rested in the seventh month the 17th day of the month on the months of ararat and the waters decreased continually until the 10th month 
In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. The first day of the tenth month is 5th of December 2021 in this year. The next Bible verse we see for the ninth month, for the month of December is found in Jeremiah chapter 35. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim. I would like to read Lord's words, Jeremiah chapter 35 from verse 14. But although I have spoken to you, rising early and speaking, you did not obey me. I have also sent to you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Turn now everyone from his evil way, amend your doings, and do not go after other gods to serve them. Then you will dwell in the land which I have given you and your fathers. But you have not inclined your ear, nor obeyed me. And Lord states again in verse 16, This people has not obeyed me. From verse 17, Therefore thus says the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring on Judah and on all inhabitants of Jerusalem all the doom that I have pronounced against them, because I have spoken to them, but they have not heard, and I have called to them, but they have not answered. And God commanded Jeremiah, stating in chapter 36, verse 2, Take a scroll of a book and write on it all the words that I have spoken to you against Israel, against Judah, and against all the nations from the day I spoke to you, from the days of Joshua, even to this day. It may be that the house of Judah will hear all the adversities which I purpose to bring upon them, that everyone may turn from his evil way, that I may forgive their inequity and their sins. Bible says Jeremiah called Baruch the son of Neriah, and Baruch wrote on a scroll of a book. However, when they have taken the scroll to Jehoiakim, the son of Joshua, the king of Judah, in the ninth month, when Jehudi had read three or four columns, that the king cut it with the scribe's knife and cast it into the fire that was on the heart until all the scroll was consumed in the fire that was on the heart. Bible says, yet they were not afraid. And the king commanded for Baruch, the scribe and Jeremiah the prophet to be sized and Bible says in verse 26 but the Lord hid them hallelujah hallelujah amen to that I resonate myself with these Bible verses because Lord did send me to someone for him to turn from his evil ways and amend his doings not to go after other gods and serve them I got up early and went. However, the person did not incline his ear nor obey the Lord. As you know, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up. King Jehoiakim became his vassal for three years. And when he rebelled against him, God sent against him raiding bands against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken by his servants, the prophets. Surely at the commandment of the Lord, this came up on Judah to remove them from his side because of the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he had done. And in verse 4, and also because of the innocent blood he had shed. For he had filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord will not pardon. And Jehoiakim rested with his fathers, and his son Jehoiakim reigned in his place. Next Bible verse is found in Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 21 titled The Fall of Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the twelfth year of our captivity, in the tenth month on the fifth day of the month, that one who had escaped from Jerusalem came to me and said, The city has been captured. This is the second siege of Jerusalem by the king of Babylon. And the fifth day of the tenth month is 9th of December 2021. It's also recorded in 2 Kings chapter 25 from verse 1, titled The Fall and Captivity of Judah. Now it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, 
in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army came against Jerusalem and encamp against it, and they built a siege wall against it all around. So the city was besieged until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. By the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine had become so severe in the city that there was no food for the people of the land. And the tenth day of the tenth month in this year is 14th of December 2021. And the same is also recorded in Jeremiah chapter 52, titled The Fall of Jerusalem Reviewed, from verse 1. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. He also did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For because of the anger of the Lord, this happened in Jerusalem and Judah, till he finally cast them out of from his presence. Then Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. Now it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army came against Jerusalem, and encamp against it, and they built a siege wall against it all around. So the city was besieged until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. The tenth day of the tenth month in this year is 14th of December 2021, as I have just stated earlier. Another Bible verse we see for the same day, tenth day of the tenth month, is found in Ezekiel chapter 24, titled Symbol of the Cooking Pot. From verse 1, again in the ninth year, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, write down the name of the day. This very day, the king of Babylon started his siege against Jerusalem, this very day, and uttered parable to the rebellious house, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Put on a pot, set it on, and also pour water into it, Gather pieces of meat in it, every good piece, the thigh and the shoulder. Fill it with choice cuts. Take the choice of the flock, also pile fill bones under it. Make it boil well, and let the cuts simmer in it. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city, to the pot whose scum is in it, and whose scum is not gone from it. Bring it out piece by piece, on which no lot has fallen, for her blood is in her midst. She set it on top of a rock. She did not pour it on the ground to cover it with dust, that it may rise up fury and take vengeance. I have set her blood on top of a rock, that it may not be covered. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city! I too will make the pyre great, heap on the wood, kindle the fire, cook the meat well, Mix in the spices, and let the cuts be burned up. Then set the pot empty on the coals, that it may become hot and its bronze may burn, that its filthiness may be melted in it, that its scum may be consumed. She has grown weary with lies, and her great scum has not gone from her. Let her scum be in the fire, in your filthiness is lewdness. Therefore I have cleansed you, and you were not cleansed, you will not be cleansed of your filthiness anymore, till I have caused my fury to rest upon you. I, the Lord, have spoken it, it shall come to pass, and I will do it. I will not hold back, nor will I spare, nor will I relent, according to your ways, and according to your deeds, they will judge you, says the Lord God. Thanks be to God. Amen. This word came to Ezekiel. On the 10th day of the 10th month, which is, as I have stated earlier, 14th of December 2021 in this year. Ezekiel himself was in the captivity. He was taken captive to Babylon after the first besiege of Jerusalem. Another Bible verse for the month of Kislev, which is the 9th month, 
is found in Nehemiah chapter 1, states Nehemiah prays for his people. From verse 1, the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. It came to pass in the month of Kislev, in the twelfth year, as I was in Shushan, the citadel, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came with men from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, The survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. I have read the Nehemiah's prayer on my previous podcast, but I would like to read it again, for it is so beautiful and heartfelt from verse 5. And I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments, please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open, that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which I have sinned against you. Both my father says, and I have sinned, we have acted very corruptly against you, and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I pray the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast out the farthest part of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. O Lord, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name and let your servant prosper this day. I pray and grant him mercy in the sight of this man for I was the king's cupbearer. As you know, Nehemiah sought permission from the king to go back to Jerusalem and build the city walls and rebuild the city. Amen. The next Bible verse for the month of December is found in Ezra chapter 9. If you remember our last month podcast, the leaders of Israel came to Ezra and they confessed intermarriage with pagans. And it was decided on the 20th of the month, in the ninth month, that the matter will be examined. And Bible says in chapter 10, verses 16 and 17, And Ezra the priest, with certain heads of the father's households, were set apart by the father's households, each of them by name. And they sat down on the first day of the tenth month to examine the matter. By the first day of the first month, they finished questioning all the men, who had taken pagan wives. And verse 19 states, And they gave their promise that they would put away their wives. Bible states the names of the people had taken pagan wives. And the final Bible verse I would like to read out for the month of December is found in Ezekiel chapter 29. The word of God came to Ezekiel on the twelfth day of the month, in the tenth month, Twelfth day of the tenth month, i.e. twelfth Tevet, in this year is 16th of December 2021. Here is the word of God from verse 1. In the tenth year, in the tenth month, on the twelfth day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Paro, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt, Speak and say, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am against you, O Para, king of Egypt, O great monster, who lies in the midst of his rivers, who has said, My river is my own, I have made it for myself, but I will put hooks in your jaws, and cause the fish of your rivers to stick to your scales. 
I will bring you up out of the mist of your rivers, and all the fish in your rivers will stick to your scales. I will leave you in the wilderness, you and all the fish of your rivers. You shall fall on the open field. You shall not be picked up or gathered. I have given you as food to the beasts of the field and to the birds of the heavens. Then all the inhabitants of Egypt shall know that I am the Lord, because they have been a staff of reed to the house of Israel. When they took hold of you with the hand, you broke and tore all their shoulders. When they leaned on you, you broke and made all their backs quiver. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Surely I will bring a sword upon you, and cut off from you men and beast, and the land of Egypt shall become desolate and waste. Then they will know that I am the Lord, because he said, The river is mine, and I have made it. Indeed, therefore, I am against you, and against your rivers, and I will make the land of Egypt utterly vast and desolate, from Migdol to Sinai, as far as the border of Ethiopia. Neither foot of man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast pass through it, and it shall be uninhabited for forty years. I will make the land of Egypt desolate, in the midst of the countries that are desolate, and among the cities that are laid west, her cities shall be desolate forty years, and I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations, and disperse them throughout the countries. Yet thus says the Lord God, at the end of forty years I will gather the Egyptians from the peoples among whom they were scattered. I will bring back the captives of Egypt, and cause them to return to the land of Patros, to the land of their origin, and there they shall be lowly kingdom. It shall be the lowliest of kingdoms. It shall never again exalt itself above the nations, for I will diminish them, so that they will not rule over the nations anymore. No longer shall it be the confidence of the house of Israel, but will remain them of their inequity when they turn to follow them. Then they shall know that I am the Lord God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen to that. And this brings us to our podcast series for year 2021. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you all. May God bless you all in Christ Jesus. In everything you do, may God blossom it. Everything you touch, may God turn into gold for you. May God bless you all in Christ Jesus. Amen.